My dear members, this coming Shabbat, we are supposed to be reading two parashiyot, Parashat Behar and Parashat Behokotai. I would like to say an interesting Dvar Torah about Parashat Behar. The first passage of the parasha talks about the Misvah of Shemitah, that is, Six years we shall work on the land in Eretz Israel, but on the seventh year, the land stays fallow. No work on it, and whatever grows by itself is hefker, ownerless. It belongs to the public, and everyone can come and take from it. And then the Torah goes out of its way and describes every detail of the laws of Shemitah. It's interesting to note that the first pasuk of the parasha departs from the usual text of the Torah. Normally it says, Vedaber Hashem el Moshe lemor. Here it adds two words. It says, Vaidaber Hashem el Moshe Behar Sinai Lemur. Behar Sinai. It adds these words, Behar Sinai. Why add the words Behar Sinai? Rashi brings a midrash which explains it like this. Just like this mitzvah of Shemitah was said in all its details at Mount Sinai. So every other mitzvah in the Torah was also said in detail in Har Sinai. Normally, the mitzvot described in the Torah are very cryptic, with no details. For example, uh, the sukkah. All it says is, Basukot teshvu shivat yamim. You shall dwell in the sukkah seven days. It doesn't say anything about the sukkah, how to build it, or what to build it with. Take the filin. It says, There shall be a sign on your arm, an ornament between your eyes. That's it. No detail of what the tefillin is, what it is made of, if there are any straps, how many compartments, all that is explained in the oral law in the Gemara. Same with Shabbat. Thou shalt not do any any work. It doesn't tell us about the 39 milachot. That's explained in the Gemara. So this is why the Mitzvah of Shemitah was detailed to teach us just like this Mitzvah was detailed to Moshe Rabbeinu on Har Sinai, all other Mitzvot also were given in great detail to Moshe Rabbeinu in Har Sinai. Still, there's a question. The question is, why did the Torah pick on the Mitzvah of Shemitah as the yardstick to describe it in detail and learn from it that all the other Mitzvot were also in detail? Why not pick on something like Tefillin, which we wear every day, or Shabbat, which comes every week? What is so particular about the Mitzvah of Shemitah, which we don't find in other Mitzvot? The answer to that is because of the three fundamental principles described by the great sage and philosopher, Rabbi Yosef Albo. First, let me tell you a bit about his life. Rabbi Yosef Albo lived 1380 to 1444, he was one of the most famous authors of the Spanish era. He was born in a small town in Aragon, Spain. He was a student of the great Jewish philosopher, Rabbi Hasdai Kreskas, and had a good knowledge of the best scholarly writings up to his time. Rabbi Yosef Alba was a gifted speaker, and he served as a preacher, traveling from city to city, 
to encourage his fellow Jews to hold on strongly to Torah and Zvot. In those days, many Catholic missionaries tried to influence the Jewish people and convert them to Christianity. Rabbi Albo's sincere and impressive sermons did a great deal to counteract those non-Jewish influences. One of his major accomplishments was to be chosen as one of the few great Jewish scholars for the famous disputation to defend the Jewish religion. In the year 1413, in the city of Tortosa, the Jews again were forced to defend their religion or risk forced conver conversion. Rabbi Albo gave such strong and decisive arguments that his opponents, who, by the way, they were themselves Jewish converts, they were defeated convincingly and eventually lost their esteem by the church. After this famous disputation, Rabbi Yosef Albo wrote his famous book, Sefer Ha'ikarim, the Book of Principles, which belongs to the outstanding Jewish writings of all times. Although the Rambam al Shalom listed 13 fundamental principles which a Jew must believe in, Rabbi Albo reduced them to three essential principles. Those are the following. One, Hashem exists, always existed, is eternal, and the creator of the universe. Two, Hashem is not only above in the heavens, but he actively controls the people down on earth and gives proper reward and punishment. Three, Torah is min shamayim given to Moshe Rabbeinu on Har Sinai. The whole Torah, every single letter of the Torah was given to Moshe Rabbeinu. Now we can understand why the Misvav Shemitah was selected as a model because it incorporates all three essential principles defined by Rabbi Albo. Let me explain. The first one, Hashem exists. In the passage of the Shemitah, it says Shabbat Lashem. The land rests for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Look, no one wants to leave his land fallow for a whole year. No one wants to see for a whole year people coming in and picking out all the fruits they want and go home. The reason it's done is because Hashem told us to do so. The eternal creator gave us this command. Hashem is here and we are fulfilling his misvah. Two, reward and punishment. It says in Pirkei Avot, why galut ba'a la'ula? Why do the Bnei Israel go in exile? What's the reason for the exile? One reason it gives is because of non-observance of the Mesva of Shemitah. Because the Jews did not fulfill the Mesva of Shemitah, they were punished and thrown out of the land for 70 years in Galut Babel. Actually, Rashi Shalom makes a hijbun. He makes a calculation that the 70 years of Galut Babel, the exile of the Jews to Babylonia was because of the 490 years before that. The Jews did not observe the law of Shemitah. Number three, what about the proof that the Torah is in Hashemayim? It's very simple. A whole year, the land is not cultivated. So the Torah says, what if you ask yourself, what am I going to eat in the seventh year? Good question. 
because nobody, nobody's working on the land? The Torah answers, Hashem will see to it that you will have a bumper crop on the sixth year, which will last for the sixth, the seventh, and part of the eighth years. Now, who can possibly make such a promise? Not a human being, not even Moshe Rabbeinu. Only a Kadosh Baruch Hu can make such a promise. We chose the Torah is from Hashem. Torah min Hashemayim. Rabbutai, the Mitzvah of Shemitah is unique because it forces the person, the farmer, to do something that is difficult to accept, something that is normally contrary to human behavior, giving up income for a whole year for the sake of Hashem. But at the same time, because of that, it reinforces our emunah in Hashem, our bitahon, our reliance in the Almighty who promises us to give us sustenance. When a person has all he needs, he's happy with his income, he's not worried about his livelihood, it's understandable that he would have strong faith in Hashem. What about if that same person is has Shalom in a crisis and is going through agonizing times and still has strong faith in Hashem? That person is more praiseworthy and has a greater merit. Nowadays, Rabotai, we are also going through a crisis because of this horrible coronavirus. We have been isolated at home. Our synagogues and Bate Midrash are closed. We are in pain seeing our great Amidei Hachamim, Roshe Shiva and Gedolim, who passed on and left us in grief. Yet, this is the time to strengthen our Emunah in Hashem. This is the time to fight the Yasser Hara and commit ourselves to serve Hashem with more fervor and more passion to fulfill his misvot. Furthermore, I do believe that this will bring in a much happier and brighter future. This will usher in a period of joy and prosperity, and we will see our shoes soon opening up with all their glory, with all their beauty and splendor. And I hope that all of us will increase our daily attendance to Tefilot and Shi'ori Torah. And this will hasten the coming of our Mashiach Sitkenu. Amen. Ken Yeratzon.